Hey everyone, it's Evan here from The Trade Risk on Tuesday, April 17th, here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all the major markets and the current market environment. So thanks so much for tuning in. Every Tuesday and Friday we do these recap videos. Tuesday a little bit shorter on our midweek version, but uh, I think still all of the good stuff, the most important stuff that we care about, the market environment and some of the other major markets. So let's jump into it here. S&P 500 off to a nice and strong start to begin the week. It is only Tuesday. Let's jump to our weekly chart of the S&P 500. We're looking at the cash market here and each bar on my screen represents exactly one week worth of trading. So here is the weekly picture that I am looking at right now. We are up 2.06% here on Tuesday to start off the week. We have a nice bullish candle going. 54 handles higher in the SPY, in, in, I'm sorry, in uh, the cash market here for the S&P 500. And very importantly, we cleared through the short-term cluster of resistance that we discussed in our last video. We'll talk more about the short-term levels uh, when we go to the daily chart in just a moment. But see here on the weekly chart, we are now above the last three-week highs here. And we did clear above both of those uh, moving averages on my chart, that blue and yellow line, the 8 and the 20 weekly uh, period exponential moving averages, we cleared above this nice cluster here. And so far, we're off to a nice start to the week. It's it's sort of like deja vu. Last Tuesday, we were up 2% in the S&P 500, and then we went completely sideways for the rest of the week. Let's see if that happens again. Uh, up 2% right now, still three trading days left, but a nice uh, looking candle here, continuation through this short short-term resistance. And notice though, you know, we certainly aren't out of the woods yet. We have uh, lots of supply in here from February uh, when we traded in here for about five or so weeks. And we also have this downtrend line now that extends from the all-time highs that we set in late January. We made a lower high here right to kick off the month of March. And now we are kind of coming back up into this zone here. It is yet to be seen whether or not this area will act as resistance. But for those of you who do like looking at these trend lines here and sort of projecting them down, that's going to come in right around 2725 or so, give or take, uh, depending on how you want to draw that trend line. So that's something to pay attention to. Um, and I think, you know, that is really uh, what I'm looking at for the weekly chart here. I think looking ahead, we get another 20 handles, maybe, or 15 handles, maybe we. Uh, bump into some of this of, of this potential trend line resistance. Maybe some sellers come in more or less around this level. We still have a series of lower highs in place. Uh, again, maybe that will change if we see a continued move to the upside. But if we can get through this downtrend line, we can work our way through this chop, the next logical sort of horizontal level to pay attention to, and we can refine this a bit more on the daily chart, is right around 2780. This is going to be this pivot high here on the weekly chart. And if we start to break this downtrend line and head up here, uh, then the bulls are certainly going to be cooking to the upside. So that is the S&P 500. That's the weekly time frame, intermediate term. Uh, things off to a nice start here, still arguably consolidating in this larger pattern, uh, but some good short, a good short term momentum burst through the past uh, three week highs here to start off the week. Now let's go back down to the daily chart. We'll adjust to the SPY now to look at these shorter term levels here. And this is uh, this is the SPY chart. And if we look at that this week's action, this was Monday right here where we had this gap up and uh, 82 basis point, almost 1% higher move to the upside. And then we followed up today with another 1% move. So last Friday, I talked about the short position that I put on in the S&P 500 right here at the end of the day on Friday uh, as we sold off and kind of almost bullish, uh, I'm sorry, bearishly engulfed here. And we're at this very tight um, sort of compression zone looking for an expansion one way or the other is looking for that downside follow through did not get it and closed out of that short position right uh, yesterday morning a few hours into the open, that position no longer existed for me. So I took the loss in the SPY short trade that I put on on Friday. Uh, that follow through that I was looking for, for to the downside clearly did not play itself out, took the loss and um, 
did a little buying yesterday, but not in the S&P 500 directly. So no longer have a position in this, but when I look at the daily chart now, when I start to look at these levels, 266, so we still can project this trend line, this slope from which we were uh, you know, um, moving higher last week or the past two weeks. Um, we have this trend line here and we have this 266, which was the sort of the, you know, more or less the breakout level, you call it 267, whatever you want. Um, but I think this general area here now is our line in the sand on the downside. That is where we would wanna see price continue to hold above if we started to break down below 266 or so, that's again where uh, things start to get tipped the other direction and, and, and you know, we start to uh, think of things looking a little more pessimistic. But as, of its, as it stands right now, we have these fast moving averages, the 8 and 20 period racing higher now trying to align back to the bullish side as we do have the two day run higher to start off this week and bulls have some momentum behind their back. We had a sort of gap and go today. We did not fill today's gap. We just uh, gapped higher, had a little bit of a of, of a shakeout, and then we, we basically moved higher throughout the rest of the day. And we also filled the gap here. In fact, we almost have this little sort of island here um, of, of, of supply from the past three weeks or so right in here. All this trading, we kind of gapped below it here on the 22nd. Uh, and now we gapped above this here um, on today, the Tuesday, the 17th. So almost a month of trading in here. And, uh, you know, bulls clearly have that momentum. The volume has been light this week, but it is, you know, regardless, we're still moving higher. And, um, you know, we need to respect that move. So when I look at this now, we have the resistance, we have that compression, we've broken out to the upside. Now we need to see how far the bulls can take this momentum. How far can they hold on to these gains? And if they can get another strong weekly close, then we start to look all the way up to around 278 or so. That is not uh, where I think we're going in the very short term. I don't think we're going to just beeline here. But again, if we can start clearing through all of, you know, cutting through this supply here, and then you get that downtrend line we talked about on the weekly chart, then, you know, the, the next big level to pay attention to is going to be all the way up here around 278 or so. So another few percent in the SPY, not going to happen in a straight line, not even guaranteed to happen, just the bigger sort of uh, pictures to keep in our head. So that is sort of the outlook here for the S&P 500. Bulls have that momentum, 266 on the downside. The lows from today, if you're a short-term active trader, if we start taking out today's lows, that would be pessimistic there in the short term. And then 266 on the downside, that would need to hold to really keep this market as pent up uh, and acting as bullish as possible as we start to move through earnings season. So that, I think, is everything I wanted to see on the S&P 500. Um, a comment on the VIX. I don't talk about it too, too much. I traditionally don't uh, necessarily believe or personally do a whole lot of technical analysis on the VIX itself. Um, but one thing you know, we, I am noticing here is we've got now six days of the VIX just selling off uh, by at least five or you know, some, some cases almost 10% here for six days in a row. So a VIX of north of 20 down to 15. Now that you know, unwind is happening pretty happy, uh, pretty quickly. And that, that generally says you know, complacency starting to come back up. Uh, or start to resurface here in the market. So something to be aware of. Again, um, not, you know, you don't want to see a complete unwind here. I know lower volatility is generally good, but, you know, when we start to get back into, you know, resistance or previous supply levels, or we start to extend ourselves here in the S&P 500, and we see a lot of complacency in the VIX, it can kind of give you some contrarian warning signs to be a little cautious um, and maybe locking in some profits or, you know, whatever you need to do to manage that risk. So the VIX, something a a little, um, you know, something interesting there to to take a look at for those of you who are a little more, um, you know, that that have uh, a lot more experience or or just time spent uh, analyzing the VIX. Maybe you can comment or or let me know what you what you think about that in general there. But uh, that's the VIX. That's the S&P 500. Let's get to some other major markets here. So IWM is best in class. That hasn't changed. We've sort of been mentioning that in the past several videos here. It's been messy for sure in this general area, but uh, IWM has has you know been getting it done. We talked about the weekly uh, weekly close last 
last Friday above these prior two week highs. That was constructive. It was above the eight and 20 period exponential moving average. So if you were to have equity risk on, or if you were looking at uh, getting that exposure there, the IWM has always, has made the most sense here and it continues to make the most sense. Uh, when I look at the daily chart of the IWM, it seems like 160, these prior all-time highs are uh, sort of the target, the destiny here of IWM to retest. That's about three points away, about two 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 percent or so um, in the IWM. So that seems reasonable, particularly if the bulls are going to continue to um, keep this, you know, keep this uh, party train going to the upside. We have this trend line, which was roughly the slope from last week. You can see we're getting a little parabolic here, or, you know, we're getting a little uh, excited here towards the end, which again, we talked about the VIX selling off, maybe a little excitement today, a little froth in the short term, perhaps. Uh, so something to be aware of. And we also talked about you know, we, we, we threw out the, the scenario, which we always like to try and outline uh, both the bullish and bear, bear scenarios, but we talked about this potential little sloppy sideways slanted head and shoulders. You could probably still make the case that, hey, if IWM abruptly stalled out right here, you could have some, uh, you know, right shoulder developing here. Again, it probably doesn't fit the perfect textbook pattern of one, but uh, something to think about there if you are looking for an excuse to potentially uh, play the other side of this, if you start to see some IWM weakness come in uh, very abruptly here, something to think about. So that's the IWM, still looks good to me. And, and the NASDAQ 100, uh, you can see 2%, nice move today, helped uh, certainly by uh, some of the earnings we had yesterday. It is still on a relative basis, you know, it's still off of these highs here, but but you know, not tremendously so. We, we did now completely and firmly recover the eight period exponential moving average and thrust it away from that 20 period, which is still bullishly aligned here on the weekly chart. Uh, and we did take out, um, you know, this pattern is slightly, a little bit different than, than, than the SPY and then the IWM. We did take out um, uh, Friday the first week of April's trading. And you can see we're starting to work our way above the last close of March back to the upside. This was right after the uh, the, the big drop here, the 7.5% drop on the second to last week of March. So we're starting to get back up here and recover that. We still have this open gap right up here. We, uh, we more or less filled this open gap from the 22nd here in the queues. We still have this one, which set up this island top reversal here, which kind of sent us lower for the next couple of weeks. We still have this gap that is open here. So maybe uh, before all is said and done, the queues can make its way all the way back up to 171 or so. That would be a nice bullish target there if we can keep this momentum going into earnings season. Something to think about. Here is the trend line that extends from uh, the recent slope of this this rally over the past two weeks or so. So that is uh, the market environment overall. Lots of recovery, good steps in the right direction, clearing above some technical zones, putting some distance away last uh, in between last week's uh, resistance breakout. So bulls momentum, maybe a little froth with the VIX that we're looking at in, in this in this um, you know in the excitement of this move or the the vertical nature of this uh, move here today. So something if you're active if you're short term if you want some protection you know things to think about structurally i think we have the levels to pay attention to on the downside um for support to hold so that's the market let's talk about some of the other major markets, TLT, and here's sort of another curiosity piece to the puzzle. Um, you know, when we look at TLT here, this is this has remained uh, remarkably resilient here in the face of this equity move up uh, this week so far. I know it's only a two percent move, so I don't want to overblow it, but TLT here, and there's lots of other factors, but this is holding up. This is still positive here on the on the week. Um, a you know an asset class that is generally seen as, as sort of a safe haven here when equities. Um, are not getting any love. TLT is holding up. It is holding above this slope here, this trend line of um, of of 
support from the late February rally here in TLT. So that's something interesting. Bulls not letting this kind of give itself up. Uh, I think the levels here, if we start losing 120, you know, certainly yesterday's lows, because uh, we did start off with that gap lower, but it was bid up. So if we start losing this 120.20 level or these lower 120 levels, then I think you have potentially this breakdown in the TLT. But as long as that's holding, then we have this short-term trend still intact for bulls to sort of hang their hat on. So something that's interesting there and kind of along the same lines as gold, right? Another kind of safety asset here. Uh, generally speaking, equities, you know, moving to the upside with some authority. You would expect a little bit of, um, you know, air to come out of the balloons here in TLT and GLD and it's staying pretty resilient. You can see it's also up 24 basis points here on the week and it seems to be hugging or getting real close to this resistance up here, this 128 level that we've been mentioning for multiple weeks now, it's starting to uh, feel determined to uh, continue to tackle that. So it's something worth watching here, both in TLT and GLD. Um, if we start to get these moves that are, you know, start to get these upside breakouts, particularly in the GLD, I think this is set up a little nice, uh, a little more nice here. And I've been mentioning this base for quite a while, this uh, on a longer term time frame. I think this looks attractive here. So something to pay attention to. Volume's light. Uh, um, so we'll give it that, but uh, right now the short-term trend is still higher here in GLD. And we take kick it over to silver. Very similar thoughts here. Continues to remain resilient, getting back to the top end of this range, basing out in the top half above the 8 and 20 period moving average. A little heavier volume today in silver. So nice to see 50 basis points to the upside. Start getting above 1590 or so. Get some proof. Uh, get some proof that we can take out resistance, and that certainly looks uh, good for the bull case if that can be accomplished. So gold, silver, we'll go to uh, commodities here, uh, rest of the commodities to round this video out. Oil, USO, up today, 22 basis points, had this gap down. We're a little bit lower here on the week, 1% to the downside, but don't forget we had a 8% move last week. So a little bit of digestion here, a little bit of a check back to some of these moving averages uh, is completely normal and reasonable. When we look here at the daily chart, this level is important and you can see the, the buyers did step in here right around 1325 in the USO ETF. So it's holding above the eight period, it's holding above this breakout level that we emerged from last week uh, to keep that upper level momentum in place in check here. We want to see USO continue to hold above 13 and a quarter or so. If it does pull back a little bit further, uh, not the end of the world, but ideally you'd want to see the breakout hold for you short term sort of active momentum traders. And finally, natural gas. We can see here on the week, mostly flat, had a bit of a pop higher um, a little bit earlier yesterday or even this morning. It was trying to check back up to this 2275 level. This has kind of been a, uh, a, a labeled resistance area up here. It's struggled in this general area in the past. This time is no different. And uh, we need to see if we can get natural gas clearing above here to start to break the cycle. It's been quiet for a while, starting to see some volume come in, although the, the 20 day average volume has been declining. Uh, but still, you're seeing a little bit more volume starting to come in here. So let's see if we get a change of character, a little bit more uh, money kind of sloshing around in natural gas. Uh, in the coming weeks. So that uh, that is what I have for today's video. Hopefully you guys um, are doing well to start off the beginning of the week. Thank you so much as always for watching the video. Friday will be the next one. I hope to see you there and um, that's it. So thanks so much for watching and talk to you on Friday.